I figure we can just dive into conversation. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, this is the Naked Folk podcast. We talk about sex, relationships, taboo, uncomfortable topics to make it more comfortable, ideally, um, for the everyday person. And I'm so happy to have Annalisa Wagner with us. They are a sex worker, an artist, a photographer, but I would love if you could describe yourself because I sure. find ideally that hearing it from the person you're speaking to is much better than like me saying yeah who you are um so I'm all of those things Mm -hmm. um but I I kind of refer to myself as more of like a multifaceted human being Mm -hmm. in terms of like pretty much everything that I do um more even more so now I'm actually uh retiring from like modeling and stuff like that Mm -hmm. uh which is great because it's time yeah (laughs) but um Yeah, I do modeling, photography, uh, mostly film. Um, I also kind of do, kind of create space for communication on deep topics as well, because that kind of comes through in my photography work with people, Mm because I'm a very deep person. (laughs) So it just kind of comes with the territory I've found. That's that's Um, so cool. Yeah. And what are your pronouns? Uh, They, them. Amazing. Thank you for asking. Yes. Um, That's something that I really like to ask, and... Um, I think it's important. It's good. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's a really nice change in um, kind of the environment in terms of just gender and gender expression and being more open and communicative about it because it's really not that big of a deal. No, I, I saw a TikTok the other day that was like, someone's pronouns is just asking them their name essentially like yeah. if you met someone and they were like oh I want to be called Kat instead of Catherine yeah it's the same exact thing yeah a lot of people have nicknames um the funny thing is most people don't get to choose them mm-hmm. like they're kind of given to you by like your friend group or your family or something mm-hmm. like that so it's kind of cool when you get to do it yourself yeah and it's also nice that you can take ownership of exactly of that space for you yeah um that's amazing. Yeah. So I followed you for a while. I love your work. I think Thank everything you. that you do is really cool. Um, I saw a while ago you did like a gallery with some oh, of your yes. work. Uh, so my friend, he puts on um, these shows called Sense Art Fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, he goes by Future Eyes. Um, he's also uh, my roommate's baby daddy. So uh, we have like a very just like family oriented mm-hmm. relationship. But um, he was putting on this really great show and had asked me to be a part of it. And it was the first time I had really, like, officially shown my self-portraiture work Mm -hmm. um, on, like, a more of a professional level. Um, Because everything that I have done up until now has just been, like, online because I've been grinding for a while. Sure. Um, But uh, it was really lovely to just, like, set everything up, see it in person on, like... Just, and it's a different experience seeing it, like, uh, through other people's eyes as well. Mm -hmm. Um, It was really fun to go to the event afterwards, and I, the way that I present, um, like, aesthetically and physically at this point is very different from how I used to present. Mm -hmm. Um, I was very, I call her Bimbo Lisa. She was kind of like my alter ego. Um, And she was, like, you know, hyper blonde, you know, boobs always out, like, very just, like, front-facing feminine Mm -hmm. type of person. And uh, that was how I shot myself in that way. And I realized my self-portraiture was kind of a way for me to fall in love with myself in a way, Mm -hmm. Um, to see myself and be like, oh, wow, that is actually me. Or, oh, wow, I did kind of represent myself in this way that I've always wanted to see myself Mm -hmm. or or not necessarily that actually it was more so it was deeper than that it was like I want to make sure that what I'm presenting to the world is what people see and when you're so like caught up in like gender identity and having to express yourself in a particular way because that was how you were raised or that was what was expected of you it was really hard for me to love that person. Mm -hmm. So my photography work was kind of a way for me to fall in love with that identity um, in a more aesthetic way um, because how it made me feel was just not... It was the complete opposite, almost. It was really interesting. When you were experiencing it, of course. Yeah, I didn't know that at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Now that I can, like, look back on my work and be like, 
oh, wow, I shot myself in the most romantic way possible Mm -hmm. because I wanted to romanticize myself Mm because I didn't feel like I was doing that naturally. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah, because I was kind of being forced into this, like, box. Mm -hmm. Like a hyper-feminine box. Yes, and a lot of that is, like, you know, how I was raised and then also coming out of, like, a really abusive relationship Mm -hmm. as well where that was, like, one of the main focuses that he had for me Mm -hmm. was to be super feminine. Um, So, yeah, I don't remember what the (laughs) question was, but... Yeah, no, um, I love that. That's that. Yeah. To go back, I would love to kind of hear about your beginning of sex work and just like the industry as a whole. And also if you are comfortable being called a sex worker, if you call yourself a sex worker. Um, Yeah, I refer myself to a sex worker um, mostly because a lot of my work um, is that, Mm -hmm. you know, it's based in, you know, selling either a fantasy or some sort of idea of romance and beauty and you know things like that and I feel like so much of that is already sexualized Mm -hmm. um so yeah I mean I don't have any qualms with the term Mm -hmm. um I try to embrace it when I can I think other people have more qualms with it because of the stigma behind it but um but yeah I don't mind calling myself a sex worker I do OnlyFans so Mm -hmm. you know if you're an OnlyFans girly (laughs) you're kind of you know, on that boat. Um, some people can disagree, but, um, yeah, I've had, the reason I ask is I've had a variation of people that I've met in the industry who prefer not to use that term. Yeah. And I think that's like, okay, but also I love, I just love to ask. Um, I do like sex and relationships content. I have done a lot of journalism around the porn industry and things like that. So it's always a question that it's interesting to hear people's answers and, and why they prefer not to label or to label themselves that way. Sure, for sure. Um, yeah, so tell me about when that started for you, what uh, that looked like. So I, I started modeling at a very young age. I was about like 14, 15 when I got signed with my first agency. Um, I wouldn't say that was sex work or anything like that, mm-hmm. but uh, – that industry is very sex work adjacent, mm-hmm. if you look at it from a very realistic point of view. Um, and I think that's kind of come through with like the Me Too movement and, you know, big agencies like Elite and like the Victoria's Secret thing mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. So um, moving into sex work was always something that was there. Um, it wasn't something that I had kind of capitalized on until much later in my career. Um, And the reason, one of the reasons being was because I had gotten out of that abusive relationship and I was basically just kind of left stranded with nothing, no resources, uh, no money. Um, I was in a lot of debt because of this person as well. So I basically took what I had and ran with it. And I was like, this is what we're going to do. This is how I'm going to get out of this situation. This is how I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Um... I was also dealing with a lot of mental health issues and just physical health issues because of being in this relationship um, and just like how detrimental it was to me physically. Um, So I wasn't able to like go out and say get like a job at a coffee shop or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't able to get out of my bed (laughs) for a very long time. So um, yeah, sex work just kind of gave me this opportunity to set my own hours Um, set my own prices for things. Um, It made me understand the value of my time and the value of my creativity Mm -hmm. as well. Um, Yeah, and it just offered me just so much more of an opportunity to take care of myself than any other job had ever done in my life Mm -hmm. Um, in regards to, like, working for someone else. Um, It took a lot of work to get into... uh, the place that I'm at now with it, um, I, you know, it was like two years of nonstop, like every day. I f- yeah, I feel like there's day. a misconception <laughs> that sex work is easy or that you can just start yeah. it and um, be really successful really yeah. quickly. But 
I like to compare it to like somebody who's a social media manager who, at yes. a company who's asked to do like m- multiple things. Yes. You're like doing 10 jobs exactly. and you're one person. And I mm-hmm. imagine that's what sex it's, work is like. It's definitely a multidisciplinary role for sure because you are your own boss. You are your own manager. You're also shooting your own content. You're also, you know, if you collaborate with other people, you're also um, like organizing and facilitating those collaborations you're a negotiator, you are your own, uh, like, PR person, you are on social media all the time. Like, there's so many layers to it that a lot of people don't see because they just like to see the outcome, which is, you know, lots of money or Mm -hmm. lots of free time or, you know, traveling or whatever it is that people like to focus on, so. Yeah, that's definitely... As someone who interviews a lot of people in the industry and just knows a lot about it, I feel like even I could see that it was a lot of work. Like, not anyone can just start it. I mean, you could try it. Maybe, like, every once in a while, people will be super successful right away. But it's also kind of like building a clientele, I imagine. Like, if you're a hair cutter, it takes a minute to find people who come to you often. Um, So where can people find you? Because I know you're on OnlyFans, and then you have a few Instagrams, right? Um, Yes, I'm on OnlyFans. Um, I also, my website is analoggoddess.com. You can find everything there. Um, Like my Instagram, uh, you know, the forbidden Twitter, or X as it's called now, um, (laughs) and all of that stuff. Um, You can also sign up for my newsletter there, um, which is actually the best way to keep in touch with me, just because... Uh, with the political climate around sex work and everything, I feel like uh, who knows how long we have left on the internet. Yeah, there's so much censorship happening. Um, I was just talking to somebody else about this, that their Instagram keeps getting taken down Mm -hmm. like every other month. They're Mm -hmm. having to fight to keep it up. It's just, I feel like Meta is really trying to keep sex workers down, (laughs) which is not great. Um, it's interesting because they're, they're fighting the wrong enemy, mm-hmm. honestly. Uh, like most people in the tech world should be reaching out to sex workers to see what our issues are because we're the canaries in the coal mine when it comes mm-hmm. to literally everything. <laughs> um, so it's, you can learn a lot from just connecting with sex workers in your local community because many of them do outreach, many of them volunteer, Um, Many of them are queer people of color. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, many of them are doing this just to survive. Others are doing it because they like it. Mm So, yeah. I have a, there's a company I've worked with called Momotaro, and they are. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar with them. Yeah, so I love their products. I love their stuff. So much. Um, So much. So the founder, Lindsay, was on an episode a few weeks ago. It's actually going live today. Oh, amazing. Um, so she's... Oh, I can't wait to listen to that. She's the best. Um, and she has these shirts made for the company. It's called Support Your Local Sex Worker. Yes, I have um, one. I have one, too. <laughs> I have the crop top. And oh, I, I didn't know it. there's a crop top. Yeah. Now I'm like, I need to get one of those. Yeah, I used to have a mug, too, but that was kind of a lost item in my last breakup, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's always the like certain things you lose and you're just never going to find again. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> you're just like, oh, that's gone. Yeah, you're like, Ether. well, it's probably for the best. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like the relationship. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you about gender yeah. and what you, how you feel it plays into your sex work and also what it was like for you to say that you were non-binary publicly online. So... Um, Good questions. Mm -hmm. Um, I, let's see, I'm trying to remember when I came out. I think it was not last year, but the year before. Um, I had, excuse me, I had to burp. Um, I had kind of come out personally um, to my boyfriend at the time. And it didn't go very well, Mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, And I realized I was like, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be a big shift for me because I had so heavily, I had put all of my eggs in this like basket of femininity and Mm -hmm. hyper, 
hyper femininity and just feminism and just being this like the ultimate babe. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I had received so many accolades just publicly from people for presenting that way. Like I had gotten my first uh, like national campaign or excuse me, national cover of a magazine. Um, I was on the cover of Penthouse, which was really great. And um, just super happy with that opportunity. It kind of like blew me up in terms of people knowing who I was. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's interesting being known for something that you don't really identify with personally. Um, And after a while, that, that got to be too much. And I realized, you know, also in the midst of like breaking up with this other human that um, like my whole life was changing and I needed to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And I found a wonderful therapist um, who is uh, also trans um, and he is also neurodivergent as I am as well. And it was really important for me at the time to find someone who uh, was on the same page as me. Yeah, could understand, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, Because the nuances of both of these things were so unclear to me at the time that I was like, I need help sifting through all of this. So, um, yeah, I found him, and I am so grateful. Um, He's also very sex worker friendly. Um, So it's been an incredible safe space for me to kind of delve into what gender means for me um, and how that played a role in my entire life without me knowing it, Um, which is really insane to think about. Like, if you think about something that's been going on for your entire life, I'm 33 years old, Mm -hmm. and I haven't found, I didn't know about this, about myself until like two, three years ago. So like going 30, 31 years, you know, on this set path of just like, you're a girl, this is what you do, you mm-hmm. date boys, this is how this goes, and I'm like, all of that didn't really need to happen, which is really yeah. interesting to think about, and I'm like, wow, my life could have been so different, but now I have the opportunity to live that life, which is mm-hmm. pretty cool, um, and in terms of like how that relates to my sex work and stuff, um, it's really allowed me to find a fan base Um, that really enjoys me for me Mm -hmm. and really enjoys seeing the things that I love about myself, like my body hair Mm -hmm. and, you know, seeing me with short hair and not asking, like, when are you going to grow it out again or, you know, stuff like that because they know. Um, That's so, I imagine that's very comforting. It's really, really lovely. And to be honest, I haven't given them enough credit because they're really amazing. And I appreciate them for being so supportive of me, Um, particularly the ones who like ask how I'm doing, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, they're really great. And I appreciate them a lot, but it's really nice to see, you know, those core group of people like stick around Mm -hmm. um, when just the industry in general has a lot of like a turnover rate in terms of fans and you know there's new girls coming in all the time who are you know, mm-hmm. younger or more fit or whatever and I'm just like that's okay there's space for everybody yeah. um, I think that's also like what kind of separates OnlyFans from you know maybe like more mainstream too yeah, like definitely. OnlyFans creates an opportunity for people of all genders to really have solid fan bases. Yeah, and absolutely. you can create what you want and show what you want. Yeah, that's definitely um, one of the, like, main great things, I think, about just, like, fan sites in general is you control how you are being perceived, which is really lovely coming from someone who is, you know, a survivor of abuse and um, even just... Uh, Like, another part of why I got into sex work at the time was because I am a victim of revenge porn. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, like, there was a whole thing about it. But I wanted to take back, (coughs) excuse me, my, I wanted to take take back the power in how I was being perceived at the time. And for me to do that was to lean into it 
And I was like, cool, I'm going to lean into this now and see where this goes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it was a really great choice with the uh, situation that I was in, Mm -hmm. to be honest. So that's that's so wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Thank Um, you. I like I said, I followed you for a long time. And I remember when you posted that you were non-binary and I just thought it was so cool. Thanks. I'm like, that is amazing. I appreciate Um, that a lot. Thank you. Yeah, I think. It's not something that you see a lot of, um, and we're starting to see more of it, and it's so nice that people can say how they feel and how they want to be perceived, and I think that there's this uh, misconception from people who don't understand that, oh, you're just always changing your pronouns, or, you know, people are figuring out who they are, and that's okay, and it can be just that, just like I didn't come out as queer until I was 23, and, like, that was a shift for me as well, and there's, um, I came from a religious background, so that was also a thing. It's like, um, we're as adults all learning and growing and still trying to figure out who we are. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's the part of life that, um, a lot of people don't understand. Like, you can be creative with your identity. Like, you can play with your identity. Like, that's okay to do. That's why we're here. Yeah. Like, we have bodies that are supposed to change and grow as we grow and, um, Like, when you, I think I saw a TikTok yesterday, and this woman was talking about how uh, when we, when we come to a point of understanding about ourselves, there are many different ways that we can kind of process that, Mm -hmm. and one of those ways is to change our appearance, and, um, like, any girl will know, like, you break up, you get a haircut right away, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, like, you can play with your identity based off of how you're feeling, and that's really amazing, and just having the freedom to do that, and the ability to do that is just, it's, it's really fun, and I feel like um, it's one of life's, like, less talked about joys. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, playing with your appearance and playing with how you're perceived, because you can't control how people perceive you. So why not just fucking play with it? Yeah. You know? Um, I'm someone who's had every, like, length of hair, and it's been so fun. Like, even as someone who identifies as female and feminine, like, I had short hair just like yours, and it was so fun to just feel what that felt like for me and my body and being a person. (laughs) You know, it's amazing that we get to do that, especially... um, I feel like men don't get the opportunity as much these days, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, Um, just with patriarchy and, you know, all the drama and trauma that comes with that. Um, Hopefully we'll we'll be able to shift that for them here. Yes. (laughs) Um, But yeah, um, it's just such a lovely tool that we get to use in life to just be human Mm -hmm. and just like play like we don't play enough we're all focusing on the wrong shit yeah no we all need to play so much more we that's need to play it's like I saw a TikTok as well like we keep TikTok but yeah, um I, I, I saw mean, like work-life balance videos the other day and yeah. it was like well it should be life work balance exactly. like we're not meant to work constantly we have we should enjoy our lives and do things that we enjoy and be around people that we enjoy too yeah, exactly um, Speaking of being around people and community, I have talked to a lot of sex workers who love the sex work community. Yes. Um, I feel like I've only heard positive things, aside from a few things, but what is it like for you to be surrounded by a community that accepts you and is open and open-minded? So, um, it is wonderful. It's a wonderful place to be. It's really lovely to feel connected to people um, who are just like on the same page as you. Um, And also to just like commiserate with people over, you know, the not so lovely parts of the job. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, just connecting and growing with people. Um, I love my community. Um, I am... I'm not like a social butterfly or anything to that degree, but I do have like my core group of people who, you know, know me Mm -hmm. and know my life and know the ins and outs of it. And um, I feel very lucky to have them in my life. Uh, They do a lot for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And even just, you know, having people that genuinely look out for you, is something that's kind of new for me in my life at this time. 
um, besides like you know my my two sisters who are like my everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this honestly connecting with sex work um, in the way that I did and how I did it was the best that I could have done. Mm-hmm. Um, looking back, and it's brought me to the space of knowing myself better um, so that I can make sure that I have just people around me that are actually genuinely lovely people. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's so weird to say that, like, I didn't have that before. It feels so strange. Um, But, like, honestly, that's kind of how it felt for most of my life was just I didn't have the support that I desperately needed. And... um, a lot of just growing up has been me trying to figure that out for myself. Mm-hmm. And now I don't have to be as hyper-independent, which is really lovely. But it's also bringing up other things like learning how to trust people sure. for real <laughs> and allowing people into your life and asking for help and being vulnerable um, in aspects of my life that I'm not very comfortable being vulnerable with mm-hmm. right now. <laughs> yeah, I, being vulnerable is hard. It's so I hard. Mean, it is I feel like people don't talk about how hard it is. It's so hard. It is. Like, you're talking about, like, core core beliefs, core values, core wounds, um, like, lots of parental stuff that always comes up, Mm -hmm. family stuff. Um, And it may not really seem like it from, like, the outside or, like, surface level in terms of, like, you know, the issue that you're dealing with at hand or whatever, um, but yeah, I, I like to hyper fixate and break things down in terms of how it's affecting my life. <laughs> and, um, I've had to really slow that down mm-hmm. and be like, just enjoy, just enjoy, yeah. just live. Cause you're overthinking things too much and it's not allowing you to experience like life and be present. So just enjoy. Yeah, I was talking recently with my therapist actually about that and how we as humans often also mind read other people and the ways that they uh, perceive us and our trauma, Mm -hmm. especially after being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, I do it all the time and I'm always like, wait, Haley, uh, you're mind reading. Stop. (laughs) Um, It's really hard. Yeah. Um, It's really hard to just be aware of that process too because I have to, um, I always have to like double check and triple check what I said in a conversation. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, wait, is that what I meant, what I said? And I'm like, yeah, 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 that was. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'm good. But like that process does happen um, a lot. And I feel like uh, it's an important one, but we can't get too caught up by it, essentially. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah, I think so too. And I think um, if you get too caught up, you just won't live your life the way that you want to. Yeah, exactly. It becomes like really anxious anxious and like and sticky I get stuck and in my house and yeah. I don't want to leave <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have that those yeah. days right and mm-hmm. it's better to go out in the world and do your things yep that's why I have my dog she's yeah. super active Aww. and I'm like she makes me go outside and that's so nice what yeah. kind of dog do you have uh she's a terrier chihuahua mix okay. um she's a rescue um I had her at training for a little while so this is the first week that I've had her at the house mm-hmm. Um, with me since I adopted her so um, it's been a transition but she's lovely and um, I'm very grateful to have her in my life Um, I feel like she's doing more work (laughs) than I am at this point like you're saving me (laughs) yeah and I'm like I realize I'm putting so much on you which is not your responsibility but I love you so much she also loves you though she probably is so (laughs) we're getting there she's still learning we're still like figuring out our relationship yeah. so she really loves my roommate which is great mm-hmm. um and um and her her, her kid Finn so oh that's um, so nice yeah we have like a little family drop-offs in the morning when he goes to school we take her with oh that's so cute yeah, it's really cute she's <laughs> so, so nice. happy what a good outside. way to start the day it's been really nice really nice it's actually been a lot better for me too because mm-hmm. then I just like don't rot in bed in the mornings on my phone yeah nice Uh, doom scrolling (laughs) we all do that I really try to not look at my phone (laughs) like trying to be better about it too but it's hard like if you're just like especially if you use your phone as your alarm yes if you use an alarm (laughs) 
I can't actually wake up with an alarm. It stresses me out too much. Okay. And um, my, the rest of my day is really ruined. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very sensitive in the mornings. Yeah. So I have to, like, wake up on my own. That's but fair. I usually get up between, like, 7 and 8 mm-hmm. anyway. That's so nice. Yeah. Yeah, I have... Um, an alarm that's like a vibration because I don't nice. like sound. Yes, that's great. <laughs> and I also have a sunrise alarm. I've heard about those. Those are really cool. I so my apartment in Brooklyn, my bedroom is in the basement. Oh god. Um so oh, there's no bless windows. You. Oh my god. It's like when I first moved in, I was like I'm going to be depressed here. But I got the sunrise alarm and it's really nice. It helps me wake up. Cool. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. No uh, no bed rotting. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Um so we were talking a little bit about like positivity in the yeah. sex work industry. What about negativity? Like what are the things that you think people might not be aware of when it comes to negative aspects of the job? Yeah. Um, well, first off, a lot of people don't see it as a job. Yes. Um, they don't see it as, you know, this multifaceted type of, yeah, business because it is a business. Um, you are just branding yourself. So yeah, some of the negative aspects I would say is just, you know, it is a job. Mm -hmm. It is strenuous. Um, There are stressors about it. Um, A lot of it is body focused, which a lot of people, I don't think, understand the gravity of that Mm -hmm. um, and how, um, how how that can affect your mental health and how you view yourself mm-hmm. um, and how you view your body and its capabilities. Um, it's also, I would say it's a little difficult on your love life to a degree. It could be mm-hmm. potentially. Um, you know, some people really enjoy being extremely sexually active. Um, that's really great. There are other people that, like myself, I only do solo stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, that's really where I feel safest and most comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, to the beginning of my point, it is a lot of work. You have to create your own schedule. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you're meeting your schedule. Um, No one is going to yell at you if you miss something, which is a good Mm -hmm. thing and a bad thing. Um, so you really have to have some self-discipline. Um, you also, like, depending on what your goals are, there's also other, you know, things involved. Like, if you want to go pro and Mm -hmm. do, you know, more, um, like, commercial sex work, like, that's a whole other ball game Mm -hmm. where you need to be physically fit and healthy and getting yourself checked out constantly or Mm -hmm. consistently, um, um, like sexual health is a really big issue as well. You have to be really on top of that. You have to understand, um, you know, the intricacies of that. Go to the doctor, make sure you're getting your checkups, make sure you're getting tested. Um, like there's so many other like parts of the business that people don't see because it's the back end stuff. Sure. Like, it's the work that you put in that nobody talks about because it's not fancy. It's not fun. It's not, like, it's not something that you can, like, gain, you know, accolades for, mm-hmm. you know, saying, um, you know, like, I went to the doctor and I got tested today. Yay me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, like, that's what you have to do if that is what you're going to do for work. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, as with any business, like, there's always going to be people try to take advantage and try to slide in and do you know the get rich quick type of thing Mm -hmm. and you have to keep an eye out for those types of people as well especially if you're collaborating with people Um, and yeah yeah there's a lot of personal stuff that comes up too especially if you're you know a survivor of assault or anything like that Um, that's something that you have to take into account as well Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, as with anything, as with any job, there's always pros and cons, and you just have to weigh them for yourself and just see, okay, I can deal with this for X amount of time for this much money. Yeah. That, that that's is that literally I mean, that's what everybody else does for work, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just in a different context. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think when you take out this whole, like, moral 
um, like like val- like religious type of um, you know viewpoint out of it. It's it's just work. It's a yeah. transaction. You know, if you're in the military, you're there's a transaction for your body as well. You know, to your government. Um, same thing with sex work. It's a transaction for your body. It's just the terms are different. The yeah. contract is different. That's and un- all. And unfortunately, society looks down on one. Yeah, exactly. And upholds the other. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Have you have you ever considered doing mainstream work, or do you prefer to stick with being your own boss, not working with? Um, for me personally, I don't have the stamina um, to. Uh, like work in an environment like that Mm -hmm. Um, I'm already way too burnt out Mm -hmm. from like civvy jobs where I was doing that a lot where I was like working like you know nine to five five days a week Um, I my body can't handle that Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why you know doing freelance stuff is the best for me Mm -hmm. at this time Um, I have had people, you know, want to see me work for bigger companies and things like that. But I know girls in the industry and, um, you know, they've shared stories with me about just how real, what the reality of it is. And it's Mm -hmm. very physical. And um, that's not something that I'm able to do at the moment. Um, Nor do I want to, like, put myself through that. So, um, but it's different for everybody. Everybody has... Um, different goals in the industry, which is why it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, There's different opportunities for growth and advancement, which is great. And Mm -hmm. you don't have to go up this like corporate ladder to do that, which is really fun. Um, I know a lot of girls that break into, um, you know, directing their own films Mm -hmm. or um, like photography, like myself and things like that. So um, it's a really great starting point, I think. Um, but yeah, you just have to go in it with a realistic view mm-hmm. of like connect with the people in your community, um, really figure out you know the pros and cons of everything early mm-hmm. right away, um, and yeah, just don't think that you're special. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not in that regard. Like you are special, obviously yeah. we all are, but like when you're going into an industry like this, like don't think that you're going to be, you know, this, this one shining person who's like, I can do it on my <laughs> own. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're going to get eaten up um, and it's not going to be a good experience for you. And um, yeah, just be realistic about yeah. it. That's, That's how I it feels say. for me too, as a freelancer. Yeah. Um, when I started out, it was super hard and I didn't know anyone that was, like, really, you know, hits, like, cosmopolitan articles when they first start. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. I think with uh, just, like, the environment of people talking about sex work and stuff now, we're kind of in this bubble where the bubble is kind of getting bigger and bigger, and it mm-hmm. hasn't quite burst yet. Um, and as with anything that, <coughs> excuse me, as with anything that kind of comes into you know, the forefront of the masses at the time, um, there's going to be, um, there's going to be a moment where people realize, oh, oh, this, I, I wasn't really aware mm-hmm. of this, this part of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because people just like, like we had talked about before, they see the money aspect or they see the fame aspect or they see, you know, the attention mm-hmm. that these performers get and things like that or um and all of that is really really intriguing and really enticing um so you have to come at it with just a little dose of reality as well and be like okay there's work that has to be put in first before I can reach that point Mm -hmm. absolutely Um, so yeah I think it's definitely worth it if it's something that you have kind of tossed around in your brain for a little while and you're like "Ooh, this could be it um but yeah before you if I could give any advice um just do your research and really connect with people in the industry before you yourself do anything Mm -hmm. personally yeah um because you have to remember the internet is the internet yes (laughs) and it is forever yes and no matter how hard you try um if you regret anything that goes out there I feel like we're all kind of we kind of get that at this point mm-hmm. in like internet world 
Um, but yeah, that's just something to remember for sure. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. I was talking to someone recently who was thinking about getting into sex work and mm -hmm. I remember she was kind of struggling with the idea of people finding out about her sex work that she yep. knows. Yep. And I was like, well, I, my partner and I were talking to her and asked like, well, are you uncomfortable with people finding out or are you uncomfortable with what they might think about you? Yeah. Because those are two different things. Yep. And she, she had to sit with it for a while, but I think that that's a question to ask yourself as well. Like Definitely. what, what are you really comfortable with here? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it, cause you have to go into it thinking, my family is going to see this. Oh, yeah. You have to go into it thinking that and knowing that, and you have to figure out how that feels in your body. And if that's something that feels really uncomfortable for you, this is not the pr profession that you should be in. Mm -hmm. At least you not being front-facing in this profession, mm -hmm. like your physical body. body out there. You could be on behind a camera, you could be, uh, you know, a PA on set for, for films, um, things like that. Like, there's always opportunities to work in the industry where you're not so front-facing. But people still will find out, yeah. and people <laughs> will still, uh, could potentially hold it against you um, in ways that you would be really surprised by, mm -hmm. um, especially if you have kids or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, just be, be wary, beware, um, and just know that, you know, it could potentially cause problems within relationships in the future just because, you know, people have different values and different opinions on things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when that feels threatened, they say something about it. So. Yeah. And but that's really natural. Yeah, it's super natural, but I do think it's really great when someone knows what they want to do and can exactly. do it anyways, yeah. aside from like negative opinions I, or... I, um, I admire people who do that. Mm -hmm. I really do. Um, and I think as a society, we admire people that, in that, that do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just the stigma around sex work and all of this stuff. It's, it's so weird to me because it's literally the oldest profession in the world. It is. It it's is. been around forever. <laughs> I went to, I was um, in Barcelona in March, and I went to um, an Erica Lust set. So oh, I was amazing. On set. It was so fun. Nice. Um, she has an all-women crew, mm -hmm. um, and there's, you know, non-binary and trans folks there as well, but I just thought it was so cool. Um, and I went to the Barcelona Sex Museum, which if you've never been, they, I haven't. It's really robust. Ooh. It's a really, I've been to a lot of sex and museums list. and they have like the oldest porn that exists Ooh, amazing! and like the oldest sex toys and people in Egypt writing on calligraphy on walls. Like mm -hmm. it, it's just always been a thing. It's been around <laughs> forever because sexuality has been around forever. We're human. Um, it's how we, you know, find joy. It's how we connect. It's how we create life create family, create mm -hmm. community, um, like sexuality and just being sexual beings is part of being human. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because we're human and because we're very capable um, and because we live in a capitalistic society um, that values, you know, money over many other things, um, it makes sense that we would commodify that. Mm -hmm. Like that makes sense. Yeah. 100%. It absolutely does. Um, and just the reality of that, you know, you can you can use it to your advantage or you can be angry about it and, you know, make it your life's mission to, you know, tell people that they're going to go to hell for these things. Mm -hmm. You know, all of that religious stuff. It's yeah. just so interesting to me. It is very interesting. Yeah. I think about it a lot, actually, with it's, what I write about. Yeah, I can imagine, especially coming, you know, coming up out of religion as a kid and stuff like that. So it's insanely oppressive. It is. Insanely <laughs> oppressive. Insanely. And in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, but I, I love meeting people who have kind of overcome it and live a life that they're proud of yeah. outside of it mm -hmm. um, and can still be authentic to who they are. I think that's so great. I agree. Um, when it comes to things that you're working on and things that you're proud of, do you have anything that you that comes to mind that you're thinking about as far as like you're working on a new project or in general just the things that inspire you day to day? Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm kind of in this like limbo 
period where I'm in this like liminal space of like I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really interesting that you came in at this time where I'm like I don't know, <laughs> um, but uh, it's I'm very grateful to be here even though it is very anxiety inducing um, because it's offering me a space to move away from this like mindset of needing to work every day Mm -hmm. of needing to grind consistently all the time and not resting um the last like year or so of my life has really I've really had to slow things down just health wise and Mm -hmm. things like that so um yeah it's really shifted my viewpoint on what's important to me Mm -hmm. and right now I'm realizing that my major project right now is me, which yeah. sounds really weird. <laughs> no, I, I think that's wonderful. Um, well, I didn't want to, like, get teary-eyed about this today, but, um, excuse me. It's okay. Um, crying is One human. of the ways, I cry a lot. I'm a crier, so oh, that's same. how I process things. <laughs> so, um, I always have to, like, apologize to people, because sometimes they get, like, yeah. what? happening and I'm like no no this is just how this is what happens don't worry (laughs) it's fine um but for me um yeah my project is me it's just making sure that I'm okay Mm -hmm. and that I'm working on the things that make me a better person and make me feel happy Mm -hmm. and make me feel like I'm connected to the people around me um and not coming from a place of like people pleasing to make it happen Mm -hmm. which is uh one of my major cycles that I've been breaking for the last couple of years um and part of doing that is just being single Mm -hmm. I was like one of those serial relationship girlies for a long time um and uh yeah my major project is me is just making sure that I'm healthy that I'm connecting with the people that I love in my life. Um, and then kind of seeing where that takes me because I'm transitioning out of being this like f- forward facing persona, mm-hmm. which is really difficult to do because that's been most of my life. Sure. Half, half of my life, essentially. I started when I was really young um, in, you know, with an agency where how I was perceived was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And when you're 14 years old and you're already in this like space of being really hyper aware of that, Mm -hmm. um, and then having other people tell you like, this is how you're going to succeed. We need you to be this way, or you need to look like this or act this way or walk this way. Um, like that messes with you after Mm -hmm. a long time. So I've really had to like pull back from modeling and uh, just being this like public figure um, in a sense and uh, yeah kind of cocooning a little bit Mm -hmm. but it's offering um, the space to kind of grow and see what might be next because I really don't know and I'm trying to be really okay with not knowing. (laughs) I feel like sometimes when we don't know and there's that liminal space Mm -hmm it's the best time for our mental health and well-being. I, it's very expansive. Mm -hmm. It's a very expansive time, which I'm realizing. And it's funny because I had done a tarot reading with a friend of mine um, earlier this year before we had moved into our new space. And um, I was way more nervous about everything that I'm talking about now back then. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had time to sit with it, but... uh, you know, one of the things that she said was, like, this is going to be a very expansive time, Mm -hmm. very expansive time, and I was like, okay, that could mean a lot of things, Um, but I guess I'm just, I'm learning to trust the process, Mm -hmm. and that's kind of just, that's a major theme of life for everybody, I feel, is just trusting the (laughs) process, Um, but yeah, it's interesting when you actually apply it in um, areas of your life where you're oh, oh, okay, yes, I see, I should have done this a long time ago, <laughs> got it, Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of self-compassion too, mm-hmm. um, uh, but 
I guess that's like the more expansive view of it. Um, in terms of like projects that I can work on physically, I am working on a book. Um, I'm also working on putting on my own gallery show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah, a lot of that is just like detail stuff that yeah. I get too hyper-focused on and it takes me so long. <laughs> um, but I have help, which is really nice. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm having to be okay with leaning on people for help, Yeah, which is new for me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, but I, it's probably also freeing when you are actually getting the help yes right like you're yes, like wait oh this is nice yes <laughs> when it's reciprocal and like it in the moment you're just like whoa I'm getting what I need my needs are being fulfilled and it wasn't that hard for me to ask for it you're just like it's like a like a mind-blowing moment it's pretty amazing <laughs> yeah the last question I had for you is if you could go back in time and tell younger Anna one thing what would it be Younger me questions make me cry every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to like, make you cry No, twice. you're fine. You're fine. It happens in therapy all the time whenever my therapist asks me to talk to my younger self too. Um, trust your intuition. Mm -hmm. And don't... Trust your intuition and don't listen to people that say they know what's best for you when they really don't. Mm -hmm. That's like my major advice to myself, essentially, yeah. is just trust your gut. Mm -hmm. Like really trust it. You don't have to go looking for data to back it up. You don't have to like make your mind understand why. If your body is telling you this is not a good idea, just listen. You don't have to have all the answers or all the information behind it because your body knows. Yeah. We are such sensitive human beings. And um, the world just tells us over and over again not to listen to our gut instincts because that's not profitable. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a way that we can, you know, be controlled or anything like that. That's our individuality. That's our autonomy. Mm -hmm. And you need to listen to that. That's, like, your main thing. Listen to your intuition. It's going to always guide you in the way that you need to go because you're listening to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, if anyone says anything otherwise, just be like, all right, man, whatever. You yeah. can believe that, but that's not, that's not what I believe. Um, so yeah, that's what I would tell myself that's if I could so go nice. back. I also think I love questions about inner child work and things oh, like yeah. that because often the things that we would tell ourselves, other people need to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a, I'm a big proponent of talking and mm -hmm. some people don't talk about their feelings I think it's it's so healing and helpful it is in the right containers yes it definitely is and when we have like a space to have conversations like this mm -hmm. I think it can be so healing for people listening too absolutely um, yeah thank you so much thank for you coming. this I, was really nice yeah thank I'm, you so much I'm so happy that you enjoyed know being here and oh, thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your story with me and us and yeah um yeah I I would love to stay connected absolutely we definitely will yes I'd love to be back yeah thank you so much yay thank you yay.